I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm going to talk to Mark Kettering from Aero Momentum Aircraft Engines. Okay. Well, we um, we build brand new engines using 100% brand new parts from Suzuki. Uh, we start with a factory new long, or sorry, bare block, and blueprint and build the engine from scratch. All right. So, the Suzuki-based engine, then uh, you've got two two different models of it, of which this is your big boy kind of thing, right? Yeah. This is 1500. Um, 1500 cc's. Okay. And we have a the stock version, which uses a combination of Suzuki OEM parts, and they never built the engine exactly like this. We mix, mix and match whatever parts, some from outboard, some from mini trucks, some from minivans, ah. to put the engine together. And this develops um, in this configuration 117 horsepower. Okay. At 5800. Um, we also dyno verify. We have our own um, land and sea dyno in house, and we have video on our Facebook page, you know, with the engine producing the power that we claim. We have the 1300, the AM13, or the 1500, AM15, and either engine can be done um, slanted. And oh, by you the can way, do that with both of them? With, okay. Yeah, okay. either one, and either can be done upright. And the slant configuration is something also that Suzuki does. So we didn't take an engine that was only designed to operate yeah. vertically and slant it over. We actually took one that can operate either way. And there's minor differences with baffling oil pan, oil pickup um, between them. Okay. And we utilize those changes, you know, when we do the conversions. Okay. So now let's go into a little bit of the configuration, not of between the two, but of this particular engine. And uh, talk to me about things like, uh, you know, how you reduce the uh, engine RPM and and some other technical facts about the engine there. Okay, we turn the engine at uh, 5,800 RPM for uh, best horsepower and best efficiency, and then we reduce it to about 2,240 through a gearbox, and that's our own uh, design and manufacturing. Oh, is that right? Okay. Uh, it actually was uh, originally engineered for 225 horsepower, and we use uh, 4,140 chromoly gears. Um, they're precision ground, uh, helical cut, and we've had uh, delivered over 100 gearboxes, well over 100, and we've used a bunch of airboats and aircraft. Okay, I especially know the airboats are really hard on equipment, so there's a great <laughs> testing ground for you. Yes. You don't have time to do all that, they'll do it for you. So that's great. What, uh, what, what kind of airplanes use this? And uh, you, you told me how many are out there, but what kind of airplane would want this engine? Who are you selling these to? Uh, basically anything that can use a Rotax 912 or 914. Um, also, our engine mount happens to be the same as a Lycoming, so we've had a few people that had either a Lycoming right? or a okay. Continental. Um, Q2s, um, KR2s, KISS, uh, Aventura, a few different powered parachutes, uh, got weight shift trikes. Uh, um, pretty good variety then. Yep, uh, gyrocopters. All, of, all of quite different aircraft, some <laughs> yes. very fast, some, some very not slow. very fast. Yep. What's the weight of the engine? Uh, 185 pounds. That's not included in that weight, of course, is the propeller, the radiator, the cooling fluid, or the exhaust. Um, but the ECU and the wiring is all included in that weight. The, this radiator, with all the fluids, adds 11 pounds. Um, oil is basically a pint a pound, uh, or pound a pint. <laughs> um, <laughs> The exhaust header, I think, is 4 pounds, 4.3 pounds. So how does this engine, how are people finding that this fits in the aircraft? Well, basically anything that'll fit like a O200, this will fit. Okay, all right. And within the same cowling. In fact, very specifically on the Q2, I'm, which Q200. Um, Q200, right, yes. Yeah, right. they're using the exact same cowling. Um, they're actually mounting it almost directly to the firewall. Okay. Like they do with the O200. Um, so it's a pretty simple replacement on that. Okay. Well, now you got a variation on the theme here at this show when I checked in with you, Mark, uh, to get a little more oomph out of the engine. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we're now offering a high performance package um, that we do a bunch of internal work to the cylinder head, um, unshroud the valves, multi-angle valve grind, um, porting polishing, coatings, um, higher compression, uh, different camshaft with different uh, lift and duration, uh, other things I'm forgetting right now, but a bunch of things to it. That adds about 3,500 to the price, but it ups the uh, horsepower substantially. To uh, what? Well, it ups from it, what to what? From 117 to 131 at the same RPM. 
At the same RPM? At the wow. same RPM. Okay, that's quite a that's bit of extra. That's about a 12% increase. And then up to 147 at 6,500 RPMs. We are actually delivering some motors with that um, very soon to commercial operators actually harvesting crawfish. So, Is that right? <laughs> yes. All right, well, you get another good test out of that. I'm guessing they'll work the engine pretty hard. They'll so. use about 1,000 hours in six months. Whoa. So, so well, by again, the summer, we should have 1,000 hours on the For you to go motors. do that on your own would be quite costly and tie you up from doing other work. So you're kind of, they're kind of doing you a favor by it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, even if they find out some stuff you got to change, at least you're going to know it then. So yep. that's great. In a very safe atmosphere. We don't um, deliver that stuff to aircraft before right. we put um, substantial test time on it. Beautiful. So I've decided that I've asked you all the questions. I've got the Aventura airplane, let's say. You've told me you've got all the component parts for it, the whole firewall, after forward kit, um, and you can, you can supply all that. You can even supply me a prop, all that stuff. I say, fine, sign me up. How soon can I get one? Right now we're running um, for the most simple engine um, 30 days, a little over, and for the upgraded versions, it's probably pushing 90 days. Okay, so somewhere between one and three months, yep. depending on exactly what all's going on and what exact components they want and so forth. That's uh, still a pretty reasonable time considering all these aircraft are gonna be kit aircraft because you're not ASTM approved, correct? That's correct, right okay, now we so are Okay, so this not. is a kit product, so you know they got airplane building to do too, so that's probably a pretty good number one to three months seems pretty reasonable to me anyway. Yeah, uh, actually a lot of times we actually delay the delivery for the customer. Like we have one that- So they don't have an engine sitting there getting old. Exactly. Yeah, 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 makes and sense. In fact, we test ran the engine on Monday and he picked it up uh, yesterday. Well, that's good timing then, so. Yep. Okay, great. This is all about the AM15, 117 horsepower, up to 131 horsepower with the changes you mentioned, up to 147 horsepower if you max it out and whatnot. Yep. Uh, that's the AM15. Let's go look at the AM13. All right, we shifted over here a little bit, Mark. Now we're looking at the, what the first engine I knew about was this one. Was this your first product? Yes, the okay. AM13. Yeah, this one just kind of looks familiar to me when I think aero momentum. This is what I think of, probably a lot of people. Tell us, give us some of the basic facts about this one. What its power is, what its weight is, what kind of airplanes use this? Okay, um, well, it's uh, 170 pounds. Uh, 100 horsepower in the the base version and it, we've installed it a lot of times upright on pusher configuration as we see it here yep. mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, aventura uh, over at the sh here at the show that has one of our 100 horse i believe it's a 100 horse mounted in upright configuration okay uh, we've put a lot on powered parachutes um, and trikes they generally get the yeah it's a good horsepower range yes. for all those aircraft you mentioned so I didn't ask you a question about the 15, and I want to compare that to the 13, but that's fuel consumption rates. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Now, I understand it can be different on different aircraft. How you run it. There's a lot of variations there, but what, give me kind of a general number for the 15 and compare that to the 13, Mark. The, generally about five and a half and about four and a half gallons an okay. hour at a normal cruise. The people that are using them on the, um, the weight shift trikes they use high power for takeoff and then back off, and they only run two, two and a half gallons an hour. Oh, wow, yeah. But they're throttled way back. Sure, sure. Okay. Now, you've got something else in the offing. Matter of fact, you got a couple of things in the offing you hinted to me at. Let's uh, go have a look at one more engine here. So, so here's an interesting question. It's a Suzuki. It's got all, well, Suzuki and Honda parts in it. Uh, you know, if you could somehow get it to your Suzuki dealership, could they, would they work on it? Um, I believe they'll work on it, but you can also, you know, it's a simple engine, very simple it engine. It is, okay. And all of the parts can be purchased, you know, at a Chevy dealer, because Chevy did the Chevy Metro, ah. which used that motor, or the um, Geo Tracker, which used a version of it. Um, and we provide with the engine a parts list with part numbers, so you know what interchanges, you know, what parts. Okay, so you get. would know what you could go to one of those places and buy without going, oh, okay, now you just made an aircraft engine into something else. All right, so now uh, that's great for that background on the two established engines, the AM15, the AM13. You got a bunch of those flying, different kinds of aircraft. We've been through that. Now we're looking at something that I've definitely not seen, and it looks a little more compact to me. So it's a little three-cylinder. Three-cylinder, okay. Um, it's factory rated at 75 horsepower. Okay. Most likely, um, we will be able to get another 10 plus horsepower out of it with uh, minor modifications, external mods, like the tuned header and oh, okay. um, different uh, mapping of the ECU and, 
and things. So there are people that have aircraft for which an 85 horsepower engine would be more than enough. Yep. Rotax still sells their 80 horsepower 912, and a lot of people like me love that engine. So I'm guessing this could be popular for you. Who do you think are the buyers for this engine, Mark? Well, both to replace the 80 horsepower Rotax, it's 139 pounds and $6,500. Wow, <laughs> pretty attractive price point then, yeah. yes. All right, so now this is a brand new project. You you said that you haven't, this, you haven't the engine haven't has obviously it. been run, but yep. you haven't flown this yet, and you have some other components to, to work out on mm -hmm. it yet. But when would this likely be available? Are we talking two or three years, or are we talking a few months, or how we, could that work out? In about two months, we'll deliver to our first beta customer, test customer. Okay. And then so we, fairly near term then. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then by sun and fun, we'll start taking orders for it. Okay. okay. Also working on a 2.0 turbo that is 210 horsepower. Whoa. And the manufacturer makes a version of that engine up to 409. So we're derating it. 409 what? Horsepower? 409 horsepower. <laughs> yes. So we're derating it to basically uh, 210. Well, and when you derate an engine, I'm not an engine guru should. like you, but that should spell all kinds of good things when you derate, right? Yep. All right, well, that's a lot of information. Uh, probably as many questions as most people who walked up to you here at the show would ask you, but you know what? People always have more questions, and maybe they've just been convinced by the video and want to say, send me one. How do we get a hold of you on the web, Mark? Um, aeromomentum.com. Okay. Um, that's probably the best way. And we can find all your contact information there if I want to call you up on the phone, get get specific questions. Yep, uh, my phone number is 772-240-2266. There you go, Internet World. You got his number now. So give him a call and uh, purchase one of these engines or at least talk about it some more and get some more information. We've done uh, videos on Aero Momentum before and we've got all kinds of stuff on everything in the affordable aviation space. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mark Kettering and myself here at DeLand Showcase 2017. Thank you, Dan.